Here we are down at the beautiful Cobham Estate and we've been blessed with what I think you can call some good baking weather. Now, I know that you guys might find making your own pastry at times a little bit confronting, um, but I think it's an amazing skill to have. And this one is dead simple to put together, bit of flour, obviously some extra virgin olive oil, and we're gonna apply that to an amazing spring vegetable quiche. We're just gonna kick it off. We've got 250 grams of plain flour. And just to add a little bit of interest and always uh, herbs that associate so well and work so well with spring veg is a little bit of rosemary. So we've got some fresh rosemary, about a teaspoon really finely chopped, and the same with some fresh thyme. Instead of using butter, which is your classic ingredient in a pastry, I find that in this one, the extra virgin olive oil works so well. You get a beautiful, crispy pastry uh, that goes nice and biscuity. It's, it's not crumbly like you would normally get from using butter. So we're gonna go in with about 60 mils and generous pinch of salt. And then we've got 120 mils of chilled water. So we go in with that. There's none of this having to crumble the butter through the flour and get that breadcrumb consistency. It all goes in the same bowl. And we're just gonna use a fork just to slowly bring it together, just to get it to form a dough. The reason why I use a fork, if you start with your fingers from the beginning, everything's gonna get stuck to your fingers. So just use a utensil, whether it's a butter knife, a fork, a spoon, anything, just to bring it together and then you can go hands on. And we wanna be really gentle. You don't wanna overwork it too much. That's feeling pretty good. And you can feel it, it doesn't feel tight. It's, it's really nice and loose, nice and soft, which is gonna make it really easy to roll. We'll tip that out onto the bench. And we just wanna bring it together in a little ball. Just collect all of those little odds and ends. All right, now we're at the point, we'll start to roll it and bit by bit, if it starts to stick onto the bench, We'll just give it a, a quick dusting, but that's feeling good. And you know when you haven't overworked it, when you roll it out, it doesn't spring back in itself. Just a little bit of flour on the top and underneath, and continue to roll. Keeping it nice and even. A lot of chefs would probably say to move the pastry and don't dance around it, but I think it's just force of habit. And you're gonna see, little like the speckles of the oil as well, which is, that's a good thing. If you work it all the way in and you've got a uniform color, it's probably suggesting that you've overworked it too much. So you want those little speckles, same with pastry, you're gonna have those little blobs of butter through it. You want that with the olive oil. Okay. So very simply, we're just gonna drape it across. So now's the point where you just wanna, I guess, pull everything into shape and if there's little gaps or any little little holes in the pastry, you're just gonna patch them up and mold it all together. The key thing is to just, just make sure you get it nice and even. So on the base, around the sides, and then we can just trim it up. All right, so we've got some really nice even coverage. You can feel it along the base. There's no big undulations, there's no, no gaps in it. It's looking, looking really good, nice and neat and tidy. So I'll just trim up around the edges. There's really not too much wastage, which is always good. Okay, that's looking, Nice and neat and tidy. We're gonna set that in the fridge now for about half an hour, let it rest. You don't wanna go and put that in the oven straight away. It'll freak out, it'll go into shock, it'll start to shrink, not what we want. Let it relax in the fridge. Good thing about using the extra virgin olive oil, when it goes cold, it actually does start to seize up and firm up a little bit, which is exactly what we want to set this pastry. All right, so the pastry has been resting in the fridge for about half an hour, and it's it's just popped up a little bit, which is what we want. It lets us know it's nice and relaxed. Next step is to blind bake it. I'm sure you guys have all heard of that term before. Very, very simple. A couple of sheets of baking paper over the top. And for this blind bake, we're just gonna use some rice, long grain, short grain, whatever it is. The whole purpose of that is just to weigh it down so your pastry doesn't puff up. Uh, during the baking process, and it'll get nice and biscuity and hold together. Then we've got a nice hot oven set at 200. We're gonna blind bake it for 20 minutes, and then we can fill it and put it back in the oven. Now, you might be sitting at home wondering, Maddie, you've been going back and forth to the oven, back and forth to the oven, why don't you just cook inside? I'm pretty sure that answers your question. Cooking outside is a phenomenal experience and I'm feeling extraordinarily grateful right now. I'm having an absolute blast out here today. So, there you go. Now the tart shell's been in the oven for about 20 minutes at 200. 
it's gone nice and golden brown around the edges. So I'm just gonna remove our rice, leave them, keep them, reuse them, because you wanna be doing a whole lot more baking. That's what I always say. I don't, I don't bake that much. Okay, so we'll just set the tart shell. That can just cool down a little bit while we get started on the, the filling. Gonna go in with a good hit of the extra virgin olive oil. We're working with spring veg today. So we've got some asparagus, some zucchini, some beautiful little cherry tomatoes, um, whatever you've got on hand. It's a, it's a good opportunity, acacia, frittata, anything like that to use up what you've got. All right, now we're gonna kick it off. We've just got a brown onion and I'll just kick off the, the seasoning. Good, generous pinch of salt. So we're just gonna sweat that down, cook it off, bring out some of the, the sweetness in the onion. The reason why we cook this off a little bit beforehand is purely because of the, the water content in the veg. So things like zucchini, onion, asparagus, really any veg has got a lot of water content. So if we can cook that down a little bit, remove a little bit of the moisture, as well at the same time, we're adding a bit of character to it. It's just gonna give us a much nicer, creamier quiche than what we would if you just put in raw veg and bake it all together. So we've just got one large zucchini, cut down the middle, cut into little semicircles and we're just gonna to toss that through. We're gonna follow that up with some beautiful asparagus. Just remember, this is gonna be baked, so essentially it's gonna be cooked again. You don't wanna cook this asparagus all the way down. It's gonna warm it through, and then we'll pop it in the oven. You, you still want that asparagus to have a little bit of character, a little bit of texture to it. So you're gonna hit that with a little bit more salt. Hit that with a little bit of pepper. So before we put it in the oven and lock it away, make sure your seasoning is where it needs to be. Toss that through. Now, very, very simply, this goes into the base of our tart shell. The key ingredient to your quiche is obviously your egg mixture. So we're working with a half, half quantity of milk and cream. So half a cup of each and three eggs. You know you're in the country when you've got a pot plant bucket for your bin. <laughs> I love it. And some French Gruyere. So we've just got that grated, nothing wrong with tasty cheese, cheddar, uh, even some parmesan would be great. Whisk that through. Now, you don't need to season this because of the cheese. It's got a nice saltiness to it. We've seasoned up all of the veg in there. So I think we're looking pretty good. I'm thinking I'm gonna give this a good dusting of cheese over the top at the end anyway, so that'll sort us out. All right, egg mixture over the top. The tart shell is a little bit deeper, so this is where you guys might need to make a call if you've got a different size tart shell at home. Um, all the other ingredients are the same. What you would need to do is a couple more eggs and maybe a little dash of cream just to give that a bit more volume, which is probably what I'm gonna be doing right about now. I won't be a sec. The cherry tomatoes, we're just gonna scatter them over the top. It's kind of cool if they stick out a little bit, like you get the, the little burnt gnarly edge that'll be copping a little bit more heat than the rest of it, as I promised. More cheese over the top, beautiful. Bit more black pepper. Now, that's gonna go back into the oven. We dropped it down to 160, and we'll sit it in there for about half an hour, and I reckon we're gonna be looking pretty good for lunch. I'll tell you what, as far as quiches go, I reckon that is looking pretty sharp. My nan would be very, very happy with that number right there. Pastry looks incredible. It's got a beautiful color to it. Now, I reckon I can deal with this here. Oh yeah. There we go, oh yeah, okay. That looks absolutely spot on. The pastry's got a beautiful color to it. it smells phenomenal and it's really kind of sealing everything up. This is a, the whole package. Being out here, I don't think I've ever had such a, a greater appreciation for ingredients to be able to create a dish using an ingredient that is right behind me. I mean, you want to talk about the whole tree to table concept? There's the tree, here's my table, there's my quiche. 